I welcome you all. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Good afternoon, wherever you are watching us from. I give all God all the glory because he has given us another day that he wants to speak to our lives and our issues. And therefore, I want to welcome you this afternoon. May God bless you wherever you are watching us. This afternoon, God is going to use his servant, our bishop, to speak to you and to me. And I know the message will bless you and it's going to keep us going through this year because God has a purpose for us this year. I want to welcome you to have your Bible, your notebook, and I know God is going to bless you because he has always been doing that through the word of God he has put in our bishop. And therefore, as we welcome our bishop, may you be, be prepared to receive the power to continue in this year in the name of Jesus. We want to pray. As we welcome our bishop in the, in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Our friendly Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you honor and glory and adoration because you are faithful and wonderful. This afternoon, we know you have a purpose for us and you're going to speak to us through your servant, our bishop, because there is a word you have put in his heart. As we listen to this word, may you be glorified. May our lives be changed. May our issues be solved because you love us and you care for us. We thank you and we worship you because you are good and you are faithful. As we continue to hear your word, may you also bless our bishop as we, we continue to use him this year and the years to come for your glory and for your honor. We thank you and we worship you because you are faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, bishop. Amen. In Jesus name. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. We trust that in the new year, now we are in 2024, the Lord has kept you, and that is how he is. The Bible says in the book of uh, Matthew, uh, chapter 28, the last verse, and I will be with you always until the end of time. And that's how, that's what we, we trust God to be, always, always. He will be with us until the end. Now, we want to, to do one thing. Last time, we, we had a message about how to enter uh, this new year 2024. And we had the prophetic message for that year. It was powerful, powerful, powerful. And I know with all my heart that you are really blessed by the message. Now, we will not embark so much on that uh, because of, uh, of time and because the Holy Spirit is making new moves. I would like us to, to have a moment to share a message on the avenues of, of divine refreshment. An avenue of divine refreshment. We are talking about avenues of divine refreshment. Now, every person at the beginning of, at such a, a moment, beginning of the year, you feel like you want to be renewed. You want to be delivered from a unique uh, confusion. Not only confusion, it's like a heavy thing over you, heavy environment, mm? heavy surrounding. And um, you, you like to be renewed. You like to be revitalized. You like to be refreshed. You like to move a, a little bit faster. Some of you wake up. You don't feel like you, you want to work so well. You don't feel like you, you, you have an idea of the next move. You don't feel like your business has, you, you know, as market uh, has space. Uh, you don't feel renewed. But I want to tell, to tell you the truth. You need avenues of divine uh, refreshment. Because the Bible talks about days of refreshment, a season of refreshment drawn from the throne of God. How do we handle this by the grace of God? One, uh, our life, we need to have a clear way, a clear way for our God, a very clear way for our God, the God we serve. We need to have a very clear way for our God. One, 
we need to wait upon God until our strength is renewed. Wait upon God until our strength is renewed. Let's read some scriptures. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 27 verse 14. 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I'd like you to look at that verse. This is a very important aspect. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In Jesus' name, I would like to introduce you to what we call waiting upon the Lord. If there is anything God requires from us, is waiting. Now, people think waiting upon the Lord is staying, sitting back and resting. Not. People think waiting upon God is being inactive and you are just silent somewhere. That's not the issue. Waiting upon God is being active in prayer. So active in prayer. And we are so active in prayer is a prayer where you have an open heart that is ready to draw from God the new program, the new thoughts, the new ideas, the new move of God, the program, the season that God has. A heart that is open, a heart that is open to receive information, a heart that is open to receive the touch of God. Bible says, wait upon the... Remember now when disciples were, Jesus was preaching and he died and rose from the dead. The Bible says, there's two things he did. The, the, the disciples were heavy. After the, the resurrection of Christ, some of them did not know, really. After the experience on Friday, the way Christ was tortured, <laughs> the way Christ suffered, some of them could not actually hold that. See, they could not be stable. They knew God had said, Christ had said about his suffering. But the new experience was terrible. And some of them we, we, uh, 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 withdrew, went uh, back to their own lives. And on the third day, Christ rose from the dead just as he had said. And uh, Jesus, after this erection, Bible says he appeared not to the public, but to his disciples with infallible proofs that he is actually the one that died on Friday and the one that rose on the first day of the week. And I am the one that suffered. I am the one that has conquered death. I am the one that was put on shame. I am the one that has disapproved shame. I am the one that was beaten by men. I am the one that now have authority over men. And Christ appeared with infallible truth, proofs for 40 days. Not to the public, but the disciples. After that, Jesus ascended. But before he ascended, disciples wanted to know, Jesus, what is the fate of Israel? They thought now Jesus would remove the system of empires, empires colonizing Israel. Israel started with Babylon, Medo Persia took over, Greek, and now they were at the Roman Empire, empire after empire. And Christ said, No, 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 no. I promise this. The Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. That is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And Christ commanded them, wait for the promise. There are times that God just wants you to wait for a definite experience. Christ said, this time, you're not just waiting. You are waiting for something that you come from heaven. You are waiting for power that you come from heaven. You are waiting for the gifts of the Father. Then, wait, wait, wait. And they went to the upper room and they waited Bible says on the day of Pentecost when it was fully come. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. What happened? Suddenly there was voice from heaven. It culminated with fire. Tongues of fire on each one of them. 
and Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, And they all spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. We, want to, we need to wait for a refreshment from the throne of God by the Holy Spirit. I always know the Holy Spirit baptizes you more and more. After the initial baptism, Christ can baptize with the Holy Spirit every day, every day with new experience of anointing and baptism. That's why we need to have avenues of divine refreshment in our lives. That's very important. And um, in Exodus 14 verse 13, there was another waiting. When the, when, the, when the people of Israel wanted, started making noise and saying, Now Moses, how come, how come that you brought us all the way from Egypt to die in the wilderness? We would rather have died as slaves in Egypt and we be buried by Pharaoh as his slaves. But Moses said, no, no, stop. Because we are followed by the, 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 the Egyptian army, strong army. And before them was the sea. And the, they were to be squeezed in between. And maybe most likely be crushed by the army from Egypt. But Moses said, now you people, you need to know. That Jehovah is responsible for this journey. Jehovah is responsible. He has directed us. And it appears... The way to the promised land is through the Red Sea, but we do not know how. You know, one of the things we need to know, if you don't defile yourself, and you know very well you have worked with God, and the way appears to be pointing at you are, you are now, let's see. God is responsible for that journey, and there's a moment where you need to wait now. For God to show the new way of dealing with the blockage, the sea. And Moses said to the people, verse 13, Exodus 14, verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Start to you and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, God will save you in all ways. He will save you in the sea. He will save you. From the enemy. Start seal. Which God you accomplished for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today. You shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. One of the issues. One of the things that you need to do. If you are going to experience. A, a refreshment. Is to hold your peace. Holding your peace. Is actually stop talking. Shut your mouth. Be still. Give a moment whereby right there, right in that, that area, you, you, are, you are silent and you are still enough to be able to see the salvation of God. And God did a miracle and they closed over. That's very, very important. By the grace of every God. We need to, to understand the word of God in the scriptures. The Lord is so kind to us. In Job chapter 14 verse 14. That is Job chapter 14 verse 14. Aha. Uh -huh, trusting that. Job chapter 14. Let's see. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh Aha. -huh. If a man dies, shall he live again? Mm -hmm. All the days of my heart service, I wait. I will, I will wait till my change come. I will wait till my change come. You shall call and I'll answer you. You shall desire the works of your hands. Look at the what the Bible says. Uh, Job says, I will wait till my church come. That is what we call a desire for church. Yes. Let God know. And, and actually, it's not you allowing God to know. Can you please admit the God I serve desire that this kind of life change. The God I serve has a plan that this kind of family setup change. 
the God I serve has a plan that the way I work around here change because I'm chosen to reflect his glory. I'm chosen as a son. I'm chosen as a daughter to demonstrate his kindness. I know the Lord I serve must have a church. The way I preach, he decided that I do it better. The way I preach, I preach better. The Lord has a program for a mobility, spiritual mobility from a lower level to a higher level. And my brother, my sister, I want to speak a church. Yes, we are about divine avenue. Yes, of refreshment. God has avenues for refreshment whereby that business you are doing tomorrow, it shall be great. The marriage you are, you are, you are practicing now, God, you like to do some rejuvenation and renewal. I rebuke Satan in all heaviness. The Lord renew your strength today. The Lord command new blessings on your hands. The Lord give you new insights. The Lord renew your body. Quicken you for great things. The Lord quicken your legs for more and more inheritance. The Lord quicken your hands so that you can touch things. And mighty, mighty prosperity, glorious prosperity will be evident. And from today, I want to speak to your heart now. It is day for refreshment. God wants to give you joy, live new war. God wants to give you testimony of his grace. God wants to teach you new things. God wants you to call people and tell them this, what my God can do. And I believe God will bless you from today. And now in the name of Jesus, as you wait upon God now, and you stop thinking evil, stop talking about failure. Let your might and your heart and your tongue agree with God. Let God now have a highway just as he did in Red Sea to bring a new revelation, a new way of deliverance, a totally new, something that you have never thought about. Let it happen now for you are owned by God and your way is owned by God and God cannot allow you to fail receive a moment of refreshment from God. In Christ we pray.